<laughs> Christ the, the mediator. We will be uh, starting in uh, the paragraph three, which is on page 20 of the book. If you're electronically, I have no idea what the electrons say, where that's located, but it's there. Uh, the previous, last week we talked about Exodus and the cross, the relationship between what happens, uh, what happens with, the, uh, with the firstborn in Egypt and then what happens with Jesus on the cross. And today, as we come back into Christ the Meteor, which fits, the, what we did last week fits in with Christ as the Meteor, how he does that role. Uh, the fact of the incarnate son, the fact that he is 100% God, 100% man. Last, the last time we were in the book, two weeks ago, was when chapter 2, the Son of God is the second person of the Holy Trinity, being true and eternal God, the brightness of the Father's glory, of the same substance and essence and equal with him, as we talked about. Today in 3, it starts out here. The Lord Jesus, his human nature, thus united to the divine, once in the person of the Son, was sanctified and anointed with the Holy Spirit above measure, or as it's in brackets, without limit. So if you turn to Psalm chapter 45, verse 7, we're going to look at those three, and then that should start a discussion here. Was anointed with the Holy Spirit without measure. We'll read the three scriptures and then discuss on that. Psalm 45, 7. Psalm 45, 7. It says, You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your fellows. Now turn to, we're going to read these three and then discuss. Uh, turn to Acts chapter 10, verse 38. <clears throat> And it says, You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And then finally, John chapter 3, verse 34. John 3, 34. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. All right. So we're going to stop there and see what... So I'm going to read this out again. The Lord Jesus, his human nature thus united to the divine, once in the person of the Son, was sanctified and anointed with the Holy Spirit above measure without limits. So are we hearing anything here? Are we seeing, uh, you know, or do we have any questions about that? Go ahead. The first thing I think about is that, that, that what's put into us picturally is, is the descending of the dove. And yeah, the, the, the idea of the that. Holy Spirit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What else? God gave Christ sovereignty over, over us. He gave him the chance to minister to us. He had a chance to minister to us. What else? Oh, yeah. What about this? What about this anointing of the Holy Spirit? Anointing of the third person of the Godhead. That happens to us also. It happens to us also. Okay, now, but why does it happen to him? Because he's man. Tell me more. Well, he's just starting his ministry. I mean, mm -hmm. we're starting, starting to. His walk is right. Right now is when is when he, he probably meets John the Baptist. Yep. Keep going. And 
he's not fully he's not he, he even though he is fully God and fully man he needs I guess he need, they God needs to give him a boost to move forward in his life okay so let me okay so let me ask you this question because this is this is some this is some difficult theology right that, that is right. here that we have this, we have to wrestle with this is a pre there are a couple of heresies that come out of this well like the this be. area well there could be like some of the Jehovah's Witness and some of those that believe there could be that there the could spirit be. was separate from the man right so if there is a so we put this up again Sorry to get you off track. No, you're not. No, no that's, that's actually that's actually good. If you have something that someone else believes in that we know is heresy, no, you're not. That could help clear up the truth. So, but you said it. it now it's the Trinity. Now it's three. Yeah, but hold on, but hold on a second. So Jesus, this is Jesus, right? Right, right here. That's Jesus. He is a hundred percent God, a hundred percent man. Okay, let's let's go back prior to incarnation, prior to the birth, right? Okay. Let's look in the the heavenly realms, mm -hmm. you know, right? Okay. Is the Holy Spirit given to Jesus in he when they're in heaven? Pro this is prior to his earthly. Prior to his earthly. Prior to his earthly ministry. So, in other words, what's the relationship in heaven between the the three parts of the three parts of the Godhead. the three parts of the Godhead? Equality. Equal. Okay, yeah. equality. Right. Yeah. Okay, good, right? Yeah. They are separate but equal, three persons in one being, right? Okay? But we have this phrase here in John chapter 3, verse 34. It says, it says, For God, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. So, Per touched on it. So this giving of the spirit. So there's no giving of the spirit in in the heavenly in in where they're at in heaven. They are in perfect relationship there, correct? And the spirit realm realm there, they're perfect. perfectly perfect in, in relationship. It would be that term that the the the, the, the Greek term that would come about the four hundred or five hundred AD the perichoresis, six hundred AD perichoresis, the the dance that they're they're in perfect or they're in perfect harmony and unity with each other. Right, but when Jesus is incarnate, right? When Jesus comes to Earth, something changed. Something has changed, right? That relationship is different, right? Or I should say, it looks different than it did before, right? Because Jesus is no longer there; he's here. Okay. So, Per, why did you say the Spirit is given to Jesus? Do you remember? Well, I mean, it. He, he at the at the time, it, it, he basically he isn't. I I don't. He's he's not blessed by by God at, at that time. At that time, I think I think God has given him given him a blessing and basically given him a purpose. You know, I know he. Well, I know he knows his purpose. I know he knows his purpose already. But yeah, that, let's not say purpose, but let, let's say this. And I know that we're we're getting there, so just hang hang it hang hang with me on this one, right? All right. Probably it was the great Puritan Jonathan Edwards who probably did the most work on this uh, about uh, on this uh, on this exact issue. So maybe we can do this. Now this is this. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking about doing it this way at all last night when he's falling asleep. But we're we're gonna work with it, right? So this 100% God part, right? What did we say last week? That Jesus has to be like us, right? For him to be the appropriate sacrifice, he has to be like us. He has to be the same uh, kind of quality. He, he is, he is set with sins like us, right? 
you know, and he resent, but he is sinless. Let's look, uh, go to Luke. I don't know if it's up there. Nope. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Verse 1. Jesus, this is right after the baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness. For forty days being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days, and when they had ended, he became hungry. The devil said to him, and so we go and turn the stone into bread, and so forth and so on, and he, he resists, right? Full of the Spirit. Look at verse 14. It says, And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread throughout the surrounding district. So I've got to be really careful here too, because as Jason pointed, you can get into some you can get into some weeds I'm, here that I'm you don't want to get into. I'm confused about where we're going. Well, hold on a second. If he's confused. Because yeah. when I read John 34, yeah. well, where, where are we going with the Spirit? Because John 34 is talking about the gift of the Spirit to the believer. No, John 34, 334. 334. Look. 334. Now, because he's talking about, he comes from above the, uh, John's last testimony. So this is John the Baptist. For he whom God knows sent, he has sent, speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. Right? So it's indicating that God has given the Spirit without measure. We don't get the, so we'll clear this up right now. We don't get the Spirit without measure. He who has, he who has received his testimony has set his seal to this God that is true. For he who is, who God has sent speaks the words of God, but gives the Spirit without measure. Right. So he's talking about Jesus in that. I mean the witness. But so just hold on with me for a second. So let me ask you this question. And now this, we're going extemporaneously, right? So Jesus in the Godhead, in heaven, prior to the incarnation, by the way. Your cup says, see what your cup says? Turn it. <laughs> they put that on your Starbucks cup this morning. So does Jesus... Oh, worth it. So I think we can get, I think we can get the word this spirit given without measure for a reason, right? right? So Jesus in the Godhead in heaven, right? In the perfect relationship and harmony with the other two of the Godhead, right? Does Jesus need as his role as 100% God, does he need the the spirit or because he's in that perfect relationship is it unnecessary? In heaven. In heaven. In yeah. heaven, he doesn't need it at all. He, well, he does, he's not so much he has the spirit, but he's in relationship in heaven, right? So they're in that perfect relationship. But now he's here on earth. And he's out of sync. There are, to, there are times when the, the man, man in yeah. him needs the support of the Holy Spirit as we do. Ah, okay. Now, let's let's go down that path. Thing. Jason's still looking at that verse. No, I'm going back. Okay. Acts, Acts, Acts. All right. So, okay, so, right. Okay, so he's, this is the key part right here. 100% man. All right. Right? He, what does it say in Philippians chapter 2? We read this last week, Philippians chapter 2, right? Always remember Philippians chapter 2, the great Christ hymn, as it's called, at the start of it. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, da, 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 da. starting in 5, 6, and 7, and 8, okay? Starting in 5, he said, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, right here, right? So, you know, logically wise, right? You can't be you, you can't you can't be partially God. You're either 100 percent God or you're not, right? Logically wise. You can't be part you can't be part infinite being, right? 
Well, when he's when he's one hundred percent God, he's completely in sync with God. He's completely in sync with the with the Father, with yes, the Holy Spirit. Like that. Once he becomes man, he's out of sync. Is basically well, but there's a the gear. And here's the reason for it. Right. Remember what did we talk last week? No one can stand before God and live. Right. But Jesus right. walks amongst us, so something has to happen to change, to change, to change what this looks like in front of us, right? And it says so in Philippians chapter 2. It says, he says, so have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of a man. So he emptied. sets aside, right, unreliant upon this, Right? Right. Fully reliant on this, uh, fully reliant on what happens here, right? Because he has to be just like us. Right? Right. But to do the things just like us that he needs to do, right? That he will do, always on the way to the cross, right? <coughs> but he but he didn't the Holy Spirit didn't didn't come upon him until he was thirty. Correct? The Holy Spirit, in the manner in which it happens there for the ministry, right? The Holy Spirit is always with Jesus, right? Okay? But I think we see a manner of degrees, right, that happens as he, as he ages, right? And the key is in here in this incarnation piece, right? He empties himself, right? He... he he is not walking in his glory here on earth, right? Okay? Right? And at that moment of the anoint uh, of the of the baptism, right? Okay? So the right? When we see we see Jesus because we see Jesus has this uh, the spirit is with Jesus at all times. We see it when he's a child and he's speaking at the temple. Who is it that knows these things like he does? So right, so exactly, like, that's right. what I was going to ask. Right, right. And then, so the, then he still has a little bit of it because obviously well, he knows the, he knows yeah. he knows the first five chapters or six chapters. Right. Or, we have to be six, really we have six to, books of the, of the of we the, have to be really careful here uh, about this. Uh, more than likely, I'd have to say I'd have to think about it for a little bit. More than likely, the Spirit is fully with him at all times. He's never without the Spirit. Okay. So what happens, just carefully thinking here, what happens then when we have the baptism, which is the beginning of the ministry, Right. it isn't that the Spirit is different to him. Okay. It the is that the spirit testifies. It is this testify, and the testi testification is heard around him, right? He's always been the anointed one. He was never not 100% God, 100% man, right? Yeah, but he was, that's the heresy. The heresy is, is that he is just that's some sort of Gnostic heresy? Yeah, some sort of divine being. He was never not this when he was well, incarnate. Yeah, because John the Baptist baptized all he, these people. Right. He would never be able to he would never be able to be sinless, right? Without the full measure of the Holy the immeasurable Holy Spirit being given to him throughout his life, right? right. Because he doesn't become you know, even if you were to take the, the Jewish idea that you're not a man until you're you're twelve years old, right? So he's twelve to thirty, that's eighteen years. The spirit is always with him fully. Right? It just comes at that moment of baptism, we have the anointing. Of, of, we have always anointed, but the public anointing of Jesus as this occurs there. The key part is, is that this spirit that is given to Jesus without measure is given because of was this. Was he bar mitzvah when he was 12? Uh, that wasn't a, I don't think that was a thing back then. Like like what we think but of, they had to become circumcised, though, right. right? Yeah, but he would have been circumcised seven days, like like Paul would say, seven days day. after birth, on the eighth day after birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the Spirit is given, Edwards did a lot in this regard. It's given because he needs the Spirit here because of the incarnation, right? Because mm -hmm. he's in the flesh. He's he's you know he has the pangs of hunger and 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 and. And all these other things that go along with that, right? So when it says the Spirit is given without measure, 
right? It's this portion, right? The 100% man that needs the support here, right? So, what are we? And I'm going to stop for a moment because I'm doing a lot of talking. Because this is this is this is difficult stuff, right? It's difficult to comprehend. Right. Well, and there's a certain part we're not going to be able to comprehend. It. I hope I didn't lose, lose too many people or we're glassing over. I didn't see anybody pass out yet or fall over. Just that. Right? Is it, right. Yeah. So, so, but let me ask you this question. If the spirit is given without measure to the 100% man, you know, because he's 100% man, the spirit is given without measure, why is the spirit given to him? To Jesus? Oh, uh, I guess to prove that he, that he's special. Yep. Yeah. Give me more. No, not to prove that he's special. Give me more on that. Why would why would the spirit be given without measure to the to Jesus incarnate? Well, what I was getting at before was when when John the Baptist baptized people before with water. That, that's all happening. He's baptizing. When he baptizes Jesus, now all of a sudden the spirit the spirit comes down like a dove in a flame and, and lands on his head and, and proves right. You. So Paul, like the witness right in the desert. But why? Why is the spirit given without measure to? Now, keep no without measure. Think about that for a second. In the in the past, it has to, to the be prophet, so he can do miracles. Ah, okay. So now we're getting to it. Okay, so so hang on to that for a second, because in the past, the spirit was given to the prophets and the patriarchs. We see it. We see it back there. We don't have enough time to go over it, but given to the prophets and the patriarchs. In, 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 in. Impartial, not immeasurable. Given to Jesus, right? Right. Without measure, right? Because he has to rely on what? The Spirit, because he's 100% man. Well, let me ask you one question. Go. I mean, the, only, the only other person that was able to do miraculous things in, before Jesus was Moses, correct? No, you yeah. had Elijah. Elisha. Yeah, you had some miraculous feedings. You had... Uh, uh, there's a couple there and there. Well, I, I mean, like continuously. Well, well, even 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 Moses wasn't continuous. I mean, there's moments where you're know, bringing water from the rock and some other things yeah. where it's clearly God's power. And clearly, the moment that Moses says "we" in combination, God says, "No, you're wrong." Let me ask you this question. And I think one of us in here picked on this too. So. He needs to, because he has, okay, good. Like we talked about this week, he has to be like us, right? So this, 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 right? Always 100% God, 100% man. He, he, he doesn't rely on this, right? Mm -hmm. While he's here incarnate, right? He doesn't rely on his godliness, right? The spirit given without measure, it's 100% man because he's got to be like us, right? Right. And it's through that, like you said, with, with with the miracles and whatnot, this is the hard stuff, right? Because the key is he has, if, if he's he, not he like has, us, he he's not the appropriate he sacrifice. A, as far as we know, he's never performed a miracle until after that happened. Right. But that's only because of the time frame of what God desires to do, Right. right? Now we do see some miraculous things that he does. We we would see it would be a miraculous thing the way that he handled the scriptures as a child. Right. I still don't have a, have a hard time grasping the, the concept here that even though he's he's hundred percent God, hundred percent man from from birth until what eight um, till the walking well, through the desert. Mm -hmm. What makes I mean, I mean God is I guess I, I get a hard time. It's God, Jesus, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Those three come together at that point in time. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is the Father's in heaven. The Holy Spirit is in heaven. Jesus is walking on earth. 100% God, 100% man. But but needs. Is the Holy Spirit given to you or not? I'm sorry? Is the Holy Spirit given to you or not? Is the Holy Spirit given to me? Yeah, as a believer. I, I believe so, yeah. Okay, is the Holy Spirit within you now, or does it only come to you at a certain period of time? It's when I accept that Christ is my Savior. Right, so it's always within you. But the Holy Spirit is always 
also in heaven. On the, because of God, the nature of God, omnipresent, on the omniscient, on the present, everywhere at one time, right? Jesus, as a hundred percent man, needs to rely on who to be to to walk sinless. Why? Who does he need to rely on? Spirit. He needs to rely, yeah, on God, on the Spirit, right? Right. He needs to rely. Right? What's the same does? He's praying at all times. Right. He, he, right. He, he has to, yeah. He has to rely on the Spirit like we do. Right? The Spirit will come and will teach you all these things, right? It says in there when he's in the in the room before before Thomas comes in, he breathed the Spirit upon them, right? Right? Things like that. Go ahead, Bob. I, I still struggle with the idea that he's God would be the man. In my mind, I, I, I can't I can't have a hard time separating the spirit or or the ability to do miracles if he's hunted God and hunts that man. Why can't he do? Because it said he emptied himself. He didn't rely on his God Godhead. It says in Philippians so two. So it was there, but it wasn't being used because. Correct. Of, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean that's the key. That's the that's the beautiful part because he can't. This is tough, I get it. We have to walk the walk. It's not mathematics. Thank you, that's it. He had to walk the walk like we do. And the only way we can walk the walk as best we can is if we have the Spirit. The spirit. Yeah. Without the Spirit, we have nothing, right? We can't do the walk. Huh. He is given the Spirit without measure, right? Because he has to do a thing that we can't do for ourselves. He has to go to the cross. He has to take all sin upon himself. He has to do all these things that we can't do and be sinless. So when God, uh, when, as the anointed one, right, that's what Christ Messiah means, anointed one, right? As the anointed one, as the, the son who has always been, right? Mm -hmm. And because he has to walk the walk as a man, not turning on, got to be careful here. Not turning on, well, I'm going to be God now, but I'm not going to be God tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Not flipping the switch. <laughs> right? That's but he needs, right? This is set aside, but he still is 100% God, right? I'm not relying on this. I'm emptying myself of this, right? I'm not relying, I'm not uh, relying on Godhead. I'm 100% man, but I'm filled with the Spirit without measure, and I must rely on this, and I must... So when we see... Right? When he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? He's not speaking, he's speaking as a man with the Spirit, not 100% God, right? He's been given the Spirit, right? He is like us in all ways, the scripture tells us. Sort of us. like if I have $100 in my, 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 my pocket, it's, it's, it's always God's. This is mine. This is my money. I have this in my, my wallet, but I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to spend it because it's not mine. It, 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 that's God. It's not bad. Yeah, maybe we could. Right. We like could take visual analogy. Right. Uh, you know, you have to get it. I like to walk the walk. If you keep this idea, I think you can work with that, Jason. How are we doing? Are we stepping in the heresy? Are we burning no, the I'm just yet? trying to figure out. I'm still working through in my head. All right, good. As long as trying to line. I'm just worried when the steak the well, steak comes out, the gasoline, and we start. Hey, you the, need to stand up there. Well, the the Gnostic heresy is that that the man and spirit are separate, mm -hmm. and that flesh is bad. Correct. Basically, what it is, and their yes. extrapolation of that with Christ is. Christ was not anything before he was anointed with the Spirit, and the Spirit left, left him just before he was crucified, basically. Yeah. Just before he died. So that's basically the Gnostic heresy. Right. What do you call it? The Gnostic? The Gnostic, Gnostic, yeah. The Gnostic, right. The yeah, Gnostic, they, Gnostic, they, Gnostic they, meaning the spirit, knowledge the, the, from Greek. And, and they were, you know, they did self-flagellation and all other things because they felt the body was bad, period. Not oh, those are the dudes that beat themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, so, but there's, but that's that's where that comes in, and I'm just trying to line up my scriptures right. to figure out because there's some tenses and things in, in oh yeah the, in this that I'm reading that are making at, it confusing. We're gonna we're, we're gonna look at another thing here. So yeah, Jesus has. To, so if we think this, I love the way Bob said, it. Jesus has to walk the walk. 
always has, he has to walk the walk as a man. That means that he has to be, it says he was tempted in all things, right? Yeah. So that means he can't be at a part where he's untempted, right? He can't say, well, I'm not going to be tempted in this because I'm better than that. He has to rely on always praying, right? Jesus is always praying, mm -hmm. praying, 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 always goes into the places of prayer. He has to rely on the Spirit. We also, right, so that gives us a, this, this gives us, you know, for us, we too have to rely on the Spirit in our lives, right? Jesus was always sinless in a sinful world, right? So as the Spirit is given, right, without measure, that's one of the key things, without measure is given, right? So that he can, so that he can do those things, so that, you know, those, you know, arguably speaking, Per, that the, that the miracles are performed in this, in this realm, right here, with that, right? Yes, and there are things that we are not going to fully understand about this relationship. There's many things that are going on here. We don't know what it looks like to take sin on ourselves on a cross and suffer God's wrath. We don't know what that looks like. We see images of what it looks like. They tell us what it is, but we don't know what that's like. You know, we don't know what that's like. We don't know what it's, uh, what it's like to look and in, in, in to be, uh, to, to look like, uh, you know, the, as, you know, in this relationship in the Godhead and stuff. Another thing is he, it was preordained that he would show himself once he got to a certain age, correct? Am I, am I right or wrong? People would know, would truly know him. He would go out, he would go out and get the twelve, and he. And well, they, yeah, I mean, they you would, look at all the prophecies and stuff that are there. I mean, for him to do it, you know, it's in a, Jesus isn't Jesus isn't calling the twelve when he's twelve, right? That's it's for a saying. specific time. He has to, you know, he has to, he has to 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 show the image of a rabbi. He has to, in the time frame, in the age, and all these things. You know, but he doesn't go out and get them until after, after he's back. Right, but that remember that is, I think somebody said here. You know, we see that public witness, right, of who he is. That's what that's I'm saying. Why. Now he Jesus shows. always has the Spirit with him. Right now, but now have this public himself. witness of, right. of what this is. Yeah. That's so, right. will we ever get a Spirit without a measure, or will we always get a limited amount of Spirit? What? Well, well okay, so you know, Jesus is given the Spirit without measure, infinitely. Right. What, what is? Well, we are we are in a different situation because we are we are sinful people here, right? But but you know but you know when 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 you when you when you become saved, you have there's definitely a positional change. Right. There's a positional change. This without measure. It says that it was given to him without measure. It doesn't say it's given to all of us. We are given the Holy Spirit, right? We can choose to ignore the Holy Spirit, I right? Grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieve the Holy Spirit. We do all sorts of stuff, right? Where I was at. Yeah. Sort of like his cup holds all of it, mm -hmm. or ours is like a, like a, a cup with holes in it, or in our hand, and he's on what keeps on falling through it because we're, we are sinners and we don't. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I could, I could work with that. Yeah. I mean, because it's different for him. Excuse me, for I mean, because you always have this in the background too, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So hopefully, I didn't confuse anybody. How are we doing? Are we doing our day? Do we need more donuts? Do we need more sugar? <laughs> so look at so uh, so you know there is that unique relationship with the Godhead that we don't we can't fully grasp. We can only grasp parts of it. You know, and we can grasp it, you know, as best we can. Uh, the three are not different in attributes, right? They have the same attributes. The Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son have the same attributes. But they're different in they're distinguished by their relationship to one another. All right? Yeah, John 14, 26 would say this. This might be the... This, this single chapter here might be some of the heaviest lifting to do for quite a while. 1426. 1426, it says this. <coughs> but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance of that I said to you. Remember, so 
Jesus. So, so Jesus, so the Father sends the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, which is the same thing as Jesus sending the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's that 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 royal relationship that goes on there. Uh, or John fifteen twenty six, just a couple verses later, it says, "When the Helper comes, that's the Holy Spirit, whom I will send you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, He will testify about Me." So again, this is a royal relationship that's shown there. When it says proceeds from the Father, since Jesus and the Father are one, that means it proceeds from Him also. Right? So we have these relationships that we try to grant. You remember, we're trying to understand an infinite being. Which is part of the reason it's good that Jesus became incarnate. Right? He came like us to, as Bob said, to walk the walk that we did. Well, when, the the helper, we when the helper comes, it, it, give, it gives the, uh, the, the apostles purpose. And allows them to write the scriptures, right? Well, sure. They're, they're told to go and what? Wait in the upper room, right? Until this comes upon you. You wait until this time. Then I'm going to send the Spirit upon you. Then the Spirit will will guide you. Then he, Jesus says in that prayer, was it uh, John 17? He says, "I will, you know, I will spend the Spirit to you. The Spirit will teach you and remind you of all the things that right. I did to be a, so that you will be a witness." Yeah, because how could they possibly remember everything that, that happened? Right, verbatim. Right. If they don't, they, so here's the thing is, when we see this written down, it's not auto dictation. The Spirit says you will say this. You well, they all, they all have, the four, right. the four majors have different views. Right. Well, they have different, yeah, they have different aspects. It's like if we were all sitting in a, in a theater, right, and we all sat in different seats all around, and we're watching a play up there, we all have a slightly different view of the play. The play doesn't change. Right. The play still says the same thing every single time. But we have a slightly different view of what we're seeing. Maybe, maybe you know, uh, maybe, maybe because of where Trevor's sitting at, he sees somebody that's standing behind a tree that I can't see from over here. Tree. Yeah, right. Or maybe somebody doesn't even see the tree because someone else is blocking. It. You know what I mean? So it's these different views. It's the it's the same thing. <clears throat> the play never changes. The story never changes. It's just from different viewpoints. You know, like we talk and we we preaching through Mark, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing the viewpoint of Peter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Would it be appropriate to say that Jesus, God's son, it was always and is always 100% God, mm -hmm. except for the 30 years of his earthly existence where he took on the... the that would be an up. incorrect statement. He is always, he's never not 100% God. I, no, I, and that's not what I meant. Yeah. I mean, but for a period of time, he was a hundred percent man. He was always a hundred percent man. Well, yeah. okay. He's so no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. This, so this is why we talk about these things. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, when he was on Earth, he was a hundred percent man. Right, and he's a hundred percent man now too. Well, oh, yeah. But prior to prior to the incarnation, he was he was only spirit. spirit. Right. Now he's because when he ascends into heaven. Right? He ascends into heaven in bodily form. Right. He doesn't give up the body. You know, for you know, the body is also the body also shows the marks of the new covenant. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that aspect of it provides right. the uh, he's an intermediate intermediary for us because of that because aspect. of God's right. So, plan. Right. God's right. And so what is what is Jesus doing right yeah. now? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for all believers. As we speak. So now, Jesus is fully this, right? Right? With none of the with none of the with none of the godliness set aside. He's fully glorified. Now, fully this image, right? Well, I guarantee Fully you. Fully in flesh. One thing that, that unless you have this class to understand is most people wouldn't wouldn't even be able to grasp this. Well, okay, and so but, but this right, but why why are we talking about? It? So so people, if you're telling, oh, this is what we talk about in church on Sunday, you know, in Sunday school class, they would say, oh, you don't need to talk about that. Why not? Well, and that's the question because you know, as Paul, as Peter says in his sermon. Uh, 
in the beginning of Acts, what does he say? He says, this Jesus, the one that you crucified, right? Not, you know, Jesus wasn't an unknown name. Right. There's a lot of people named Jesus, right? But we're talking about this specific Jesus who was 100% God and 100% man. And then when people start, uh, start pressing, they start bringing in the heresies and stuff that, he, well, he wasn't, he, he wasn't, he was, he was divine, but he wasn't God. Well, then when you start taking those things away, then all of a sudden he ceases to be the appropriate sacrifice on the cross for us, right? So when we talk about these things, it's like we might not, we might have to think about these things. Yeah, I've been thinking about these things for days. Keep me up at night just trying to get, you know, I don't think about it every day, but in preparation for this. You know, trying to wrap my head around some things and saying, okay, is that right thinking? What I'm doing about it. You know, and so the reason why we talk about this is because number one, it solidifies our faith. Right? We might not understand 100% about it, but it solidifies our faith. And when people have, say, crazy stuff that's out there, and we can say, oh, I don't remember exactly what was said in church or science school class, but I know what they're saying is not right. <laughs> you know, that is incorrect thinking. I might have to go back and look at my notes or my book that I have, you know, to do it. But I, I recognize that as false teaching. But just to hear that, 100%, and it, it's a lot that makes you think, but it gets you in the right focus, focal point. I didn't hear that till I met you and we were going to another church. Right. The 100% component. Mm -hmm. And what could be better than, 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 the, than, the, than to see a, a, something earthly, we mathematically cannot comprehend. How can something be 100% this and 100% that? Just 100%. That? Makes All sense. right, so right away, we are faced with turmoil on, okay, how can this be? If this is the way God set it up, how can this be? And, and you know, it forces us into that that learning mode to teach this and to learn this this component. Yeah, yeah, tell you all yeah there was times as 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 we just were told that you know there was a time it wasn't a hundred hundred. Okay? Be, before what? before he came here. But but the most important thing I get out of this is those two numbers being put on the board at the same time is, is a method God is using all right. Remember, everything's in God's perfect plan. God's using that to to make us think about it and under, understand it to the best of our ability. And we can also do this. I've done this before in the past. You know, when I, you know, not we don't want to go down the rabbit hole. We want to get to the next sentence or the next part of this sentence. <laughs> All right. You know, but I've I've had that. You know, I've had that prayer. You know, when you hit stuff like this and say, God, you know, just say, I just don't get it. Allow me to be comfortable until I do get it. You know, and it's the same same idea. But when you talk about you know, uh, you know, God is the is the potter, and the clay doesn't have any right to fill the potter. That would bother me at times, but not frequently. I just pray about, it, just say, you know, and eventually, if it's necessary, you will get to the part where you can, you know, where it doesn't become an it, you know, where it's just kind of like growing understanding. Sometimes it takes the work. Sometimes it takes work to do. Sometimes you can hear this. Some people will hear this and not fully understand it, and be 100 percent comfortable with. It. Yeah, that's yeah fine. I don't really, I don't, I don't fully get it, but I'm comfortable with that. And other people will be like, oh man, I, I've just got to wrap my head around that, and they'll drive me further and further into things, and that's fine. To 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 get their get their heads around. We're all different. We all have different things that make us click. All right. So let's get to the second part of the sentence. <laughs> right after, without limit, Holy Spirit given to Jesus without limit. All right, having in Himself all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's Colossians two three tells us that. Colossians 2, 3. Colossians 2, 3 says, uh, you know, in, in the context, he's speaking about, the, about Christ, and it says in 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ, right? Now, as we step off the pathway slightly, right? So all the treasures of, of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ, but there was a period of time when he was on earth when he didn't know when the end would be. And he makes that mention, right? That was not information that was, he had set this aside, not relying on that, as a hundred percent man, he didn't know when the end would be, but now, fully, uh, fully ascended and glorified, all wisdom and knowledge, you know, at this part we said that we set it aside while I was here, all this knowledge and wisdom, right? 
100% man, but 100% reliant on the spirit, right? You know, so there's those those things. There is, it's tough. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says anointed, uh, having in himself all the treasures, the wisdom, and knowledge. And uh, there it, it it pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell in Him. So the fullness of God should dwell in Him. Fifteen uh, Colossians one nineteen. Where it says, for it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him. Jesus is 100% God. That's what it's saying. Okay, in that short passage there. Okay. It's to, you know, this is, this is, this is the, the, the difficulty of dealing with an infinite being, right? And all that fullness dwell in him, so that being holy, harmless, and undefiled. Go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. I think that's up there. Hebrews 7, 26. <coughs> Where it says, For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest holy, innocent, undefiled, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. That's the image of Jesus. Okay. Not only is the sacrifice, but he's also the high priest, the administrator of the sacrifice. The word in that is undefiled. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's the one that sticks out the most. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, undefiled. So we have, remember we talked last week, we talked about you know, the perfect, uh, you're looking for the, the most perfect lamb, right? Mm -hmm. You know, without sin, without, without uh, you know, anything uh, that, would, that would mark it as defiled, right? That's what we find in Jesus. And it says there, after that undefiled, it says, and full of grace and truth. John 1.14, John 1.14, full of grace and truth. That's the other thing about doing this study. It gets us uh, moving back and forth in our Bibles. You know, where we get the, you know, we're seeing, we start seeing relationships between the books that maybe we didn't see before. We see locations of the books and stuff, so we get, we get better at that. And it says in John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Right? And it says, he might be thoroughly furnished to execute the office. So perform the office, the function of a mediator and surety. Back to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22. So we're seeing that to perform that office of priests, right? What are the offices that Jesus holds? The three offices? So he's Prophet, priest, and king. Prophet, priest, and king are the three offices that Jesus holds. Prophet, priest, and king. Um, so Hebrews 7, 22. I'll start. Uh, well, I'll start 21. So it's out of Psalm well, 110. He says, He with an oath through the one who who said to him, the Lord has sworn will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. 22, so much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Those marks, those marks of the covenant are on the scars that are on his hands, his feet, and his side. The marks, the cutting of the covenant that we, that we see that we've talked about here before. Right? A position and duty which he did not take upon himself but was called to perform by the Father. Now, think about this for a second. Remember what we talked about. They have, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit have all the same qualities, but they have different roles. Okay, different duties. Okay? And here we see, here we see this, look. The, Jesus didn't take it upon himself to do this. This was from the Father that says, this is the thing you will do, right? 
And it says, so, in ver- uh, so there are Hebrews chapter 5, 5. Now, now we can, now this is pretty cool, actually. So also Jesus did not glorify himself so as to become a high priest, but he who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Just as he also says in another passage, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, another reference to Psalm 110. So think about this. It says there, he did not glorify himself as to become a high priest. Right? He did not himself seek the glory of being the high priest. Mm-hmm. Now, we can see throughout the scriptures of people who sought that glory. Right? Or we can see the, uh, the uh, what is it, sons of... Uh, who? Who said? The sons of... Uh, oh, who are the sons that lose the ark? Uh, where Ichabod is at? Uh, Samuel. Samuel's son? Samuel's, yeah. Samuel, yeah, right. This is first Samuel, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So you have these ones that sought the that, that were in the office of the high of the priest and whatnot like that, and they defiled the temple, right? Right. There's always that thing, but we have here Jesus who did not seek the office for himself, but was the Father. Yeah, it presents it to him, gives it to him, right? He's not seeking it himself. So we see that we see that that uh, that that perichoresis, that dance, that symbiotic relationship. Remember, so. The Father has the Son do this. The Spirit proceeds from the Son and from the Father. We have all these sorts of things showing that relationship, this perfect relationship and unity that is within the Trinity. Hmm. That is there. Uh, And the Father also put all power as king over the earth and judgment of mankind in his hand and gave him commandment to exercise the same. So we never want to forget that Jesus is the final judge. John chapter 5, verse 22. You know, we've spoken about that revelation before where we see Jesus, the image of the judge, 522. John 522. Tammy's leafing through the deep pages of her MacArthur okay. study Bible. Okay, I was looking at that. <laughs> It's easy to get distracted. Yeah, yeah. That went squirrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five, put it in electronic form and let the little verses you connect the dots. Yeah. And, and you wind up. Like, I'm in Genesis 1 1 at the moment. Oh, so, yeah, at least, yeah. It all goes so, back to Genesis, right? So, you, you have to maintain yeah. the first three chapters of Genesis, minimal, minimally. Uh, five, uh, John 5 22, where it says, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. And look at 27, 527. And he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Go to Matthew uh, 28, 18. Yeah, these are, th- this is, this is great. This is a great s- study to go through to get us back and forth in our Bibles. It's, it's just fantastic. Fantastic. 28.18 And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. Excuse me, remember we see that in Ephesians, right? Where God lifted him up and raised him up and sat him at the right hand above all, all powers and dominions. Right? That we have in both the heavenly realms and on earth, right? Where Jesus sits. And then Acts 2.36. Acts 2.36. Acts 2.36. This is right at the end of Peter's, Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Dirty rock scoundrels. Yeah, you know right? So oh, no, they were. Yes, they were right. So we're at we're at twenty after. So we're gonna we will we'll, we will chat about this more. I don't think we can. Uh, well, we can start pieces. Well, what do we think? So what are what are we here? How confused are we? Are we bored to tears? 
We good. Boredom is not a part of this program. All right. Well, I just want to make sure. Yeah. I mean, that's it. You know, and this is this is this is tough stuff. And I've got. I'll be thinking this afternoon of whether or not I actually step on a heresy of some sort. Yeah. That's Chase's. Are you going to look at the general. review? I don't well, I, I won't review the tape, but I'll, but I'll sit there and think about. You know, did I did I say that in the right way? You know, did I say that? You know, without it's stepping in. Very challenging subject. Oh, yes. Yeah. That might need a review for next week. A yeah, and I'm gonna have to look at it because here's the here's the one I forgot about the one verse that's in here, and I'll tell you we'll, we'll just we'll just be uh, we you know so if we look at that you know that Colossians chapter one verse nineteen when all the fullness dwelled in Him you know we have to rectify that fullness that dwelled in Him with the where He emptied Himself in Philippians you know this is Paul saying both these things. Now, when we look at 119, without pulling up the com Colossians 119, without pulling up the commentary, commentary on that, you know, just to get a little bit more on that, uh, it looks like in the context of what Paul's speaking there, 119, he is he is pressing on the fact that Jesus is 100% God because of we. So we are, context is king, right? We always want to do context. So if we start at the paragraph. Uh, the beginning of the paragraph, which is Colossians 1.15, he says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. All right. Okay, this is, this is Jesus. I and the Father are one. Jesus, show us the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, right? He is the image, right? The incarnate on earth, divinity on earth, right? But he was already, he was already the son of God before he came sure. to earth. Right. Yeah, because we have... The, yeah, the yeah, son always, of the Father. Yeah, yeah, always, always begotten of the Father. Well, the getting getting back to the baptism in everything, because once he's baptized and he can start performing, he starts performing miracles. If if he if if that is, I mean, that's the sign that tells you that he's got that truly he's God. But. Well, right. Before, it's, before it's, that, before that, he didn't perform miracles. There wasn't women walking up to him and touching his garment. And, what's the order know. of John, the Gospel of John? Is it in chronological at all? Because because uh, the water to wine occurs before the baptism Luke, in the Gospel. The, uh, the Luke gospel is your chapter. Luke is your chronological. And doesn't he also say to his mother, "It's not my time"? During that process, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, it's just because I thought that was uh, is that is that before. Uh, in the God, in the Gospel of John, it's before, but chronology is mixed up in the in the yeah, book so, of John, okay, from what so, I understand. So, because there's a description of okay. before the Gospel, before he he does the water to wine, it's the baptism, and then there's a reference to healing somebody at the site of where the wedding and the water to wine event right. occurred. Remember, we're not gonna we're not gonna draw we're, the only the only circle the only halo we're gonna draw around the baptism. Okay. For the moment, is there's a couple things. First of all, we see the we see the Trinity represented at the baptism. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see Jesus, the Spirit, and we hear the Father. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. At the baptism. The other thing is is we see that as the beginning of His ministry, as the official beginning of His ministry. That marks the officialness of the beginning of the ministry. Without looking 100 percent, without uh, you know. If that's the order of what it is, remember right, this would be the problem, this would, John is but, necessarily chronological. Well, but here's the other thing. But it also makes sense when Jesus says it isn't my time yet, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Oh, but it's also so, an acknowledgement that Mary definitely knew that he was God. Well, sure. She, well, she, you know, she, she was following him. Well, 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 right. Well, that's another acknowledgement be, because of the your son thing. because your son is going to be Emmanuel, which means what is it? God with us, right? You know, so you have these things that that, that you're that you're you're trying you're you're bringing together. Now, when we talk about what Jason said about John not being chronological, chronological, it's not. Luke is very chronological. Mm -hmm. Mark isn't necessarily greatly chronological. That's why you see, and that isn't an issue because we see chronology because we're used to reading newspapers in a certain way of reading, right? Uh, that is there. In the ancient times, around this time, there was a way of writing. So John has written, you know, a lot of it is legal Jewish testimony. He's writing down the testimony, right, right. Uh, of what happened. You always see those witnesses that, that are mentioned in John, right? 
that, that a person that, uh, with a Jewish background would read through that and see it as testimony, right? Mark is writing to, is specifically to, to exhort to a church in Rome that's under persecution, right? Luke has sought to write a chronology, right? So that you can be, my, my most excellent Theophilus, so that you can be more sure of what we believe, right? Of the way, right? So I, I, and he says, I've, I, Luke, I set out to write an orderly account, right? Right. Of what's going on, right? So, you know, that's why Luke is so, Luke is so detailed in both Luke and Acts, right? So detailed about locations and people and stuff like that that, 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 that we see this, this journey. And plus, Luke was, with, when we saw, we see, we see he's, with, uh, he's with Paul and whatnot and the, and the other things. So we, we look at those carefully. Uh, and, and to uh, and see where it's at. But again, with the baptism, Jesus was never not this. At the end, when he was born, right, in Mary's womb, he was also that. Right. Right. But he was always this. Okay. The when we look at the baptism, we see we see that as the he that is his. That is the beginning of the ministry. That is the anointing of the ministry to begin. That will start that three-year process that will go to the cross. But ever since before time, Jesus was always on the road to the cross. Always, you know. That was always the plan, right? Always there, in, you know, as part of the preeminent plan of what God would do. Right? Never a plan B, never a plan C. It was always, it was always Jesus, the only begotten Son, that would do that. And all for His glory. God is glorified through Jesus suffering on the cross. And it will be more glorified when we are in heaven and we see Jesus. Right? Amen. When we're in the presence of the Father and the Holy Spirit, right? When we don't have, you know, or I should say new heaven and earth, when we don't have you know, the, the, you know, sin around us and, and, and that, the, the, the clouds us, right? And we're able to see that. And then, you know, God will be truly glorified and we will know even better in that felicity and that joy of being there, we will know even better, you know, mere shadows of what we understand now. You see what that's truly like. You know, I mean, I don't understand what translucent gold looks like, but that's what it says. You know, that, the, what is that? You know, when you, when you think about it, when it says with the descriptions of what the Holy City looks like and all those things, you know, it's going to be something amazing. And we will truly glorify God. And I think at that point in time, you know, when we die, we will be confronted with how depraved we, we certainly are. And then how saved we certainly are because of that, because of Jesus. You know, yeah, that's the thing. But I'm done for now. Next week, four. You're well done. <laughs>